Why are you running to be the leader of the Conservative Party? So we've just had a really tough experience in the election. We need to unite as a party, and I believe I'm a person that can do that, certainly across the Parliamentary Party. I've been chair of the Treasury Select Committee, leader of the House of Commons. Those are the kind of qualities that you need. But we also need to drive some fundamental change in the party, both on the policy side uh, and also in terms of the organisation that we are. Uh, we need to become less centralised uh, and a leaner, meaner, local campaigning machine to win in May and in the general election. Now, my background is business. I've set up businesses from scratch, both here and in the United States. I came into Parliament in my later 40s with all of that experience of building teams of people, getting people together and pursuing a common objective. And as Secretary of State at Work and Pensions, of course, I drove some of the biggest reforms within that department in a generation, seeing hundreds of thousands of people having the opportunity of going into work and saving billions of pounds from the taxpayer. And I also believe that I'm the person that can communicate our values to the electorate, those of opportunity, of aspiration, of celebrating success, of community, of tradition, all the things that bind us together as Conservatives. What do you think we need to do over the coming years to win the next general election? And how will you achieve it? So we need to bring the party together, the entire Conservative family. There's been far too much infighting, and I believe that I'm very well positioned to do exactly that. We need to drive that change so that we have that policy offer that can reach out both to those people that have been attracted to reform, who have very genuine concerns that should be respected and we have to address them, at the same time as making sure we lean in towards those voters in the centre, and Labour and Lib Dem voters who we also need to attract back. And I think it's really important that we now very quickly reform our um, party structure so that we have a localised, energised, dynamic campaigning force on the ground to make sure that we do well in May because that's the most immediate challenge the party now faces. And if we don't achieve that, and we're hollowed out further on the ground, then that's gonna make it much more difficult to achieve victory uh, in the general election in 2029. But look, we've got the time to do this. If we have the right leader that can bring the party together and take the right decisions, then we can definitely get back into contention for the next general election. Do you have a longer term vision for the party beyond 2029? I want us to be the natural party of government. I want us to create a Britain that is at ease with itself, where opportunity, aspiration, those conservative values are celebrated. I want a country that works. I want public services that are fit for purpose. And I want right at the heart of that, our conservative values of aspiration, opportunity, community, tradition, all of those things that are so important. And I want that to shine brightly I want that to be like the sun coming up in the morning so people know what we stand for as a party because there's a huge appetite for that out in the country. And at the moment, that's been lost. I want to bring that back. What are the top three policy areas you'll prioritise? And what specific actions will you take in those areas? So I think cost of living is absolutely vital. We are the party that understands the economy. My background is economics. I was chair of the Treasury Select Committee. Um, I was a financial secretary to the Treasury, uh, responsible for taxation uh, within the Treasury, for example, for two years. And what we've got to do is we've got to maintain low inflation, we've got to get the debt down, but critically, we've got to get taxes down. And I know how I believe that we can achieve that. The second thing is immigration uh, and crime, where we've got to have a credible, deliverable offer to the British people, particularly important for reform voters. And on crime, I think we have showed that we won't tolerate even low-level crime. But I think we've got to go further. We have shown that we can have longer sentences, which act as a deterrent. But what we've also got to show is that rehabilitation matters. To stop people re-offending, to give them that chance in life, I think is fundamentally important to most Conservatives. And the final thing I would say of the three is public services. So welfare, for example, the kind of reforms that I drove at the Department for Work and Pensions, where according to the OBR, there will now be 400,000 fewer people going on to long-term sickness and disability benefits as a consequence of the reforms that I drove. And billions of pounds saved that the taxpayer is now not having to fund that we can put into tax cuts. And in fact, in our last manifesto, two thirds of the funding of the tax cuts that we presented 
to the British electorate were funded by reforms coming from my department. How would you describe your leadership style and how will you ensure unity and inclusiveness within the party? I would say my leadership style is inclusive. I'm a good listener. I get on well with people. I think it's really important if we're to collectively get together and win that we need to pool all the talents, all the ideas right across our broad conservative family, including, for example, uh, our members. And so I would say that I'm a good listener, um, that I can come together with the right plan. Once I've made my mind up, I will be absolutely determined to pursue that plan and deliver it collectively with other people. I believe that leadership fundamentally is about the individual and raising the game of every single individual in the team so that they do their absolute best, stretch themselves to the absolute limit, united with that common purpose. How did you first get involved in politics and the Conservative Party? So that was in 1981, I joined the party, but I didn't grow up in a particularly political family, but I did grow up in a family that expressed a lot of conservative values. So my parents left school before the age of 16. Uh, my father set up his own business, which of course went through all those ups and downs that businesses always do, but he prevailed and I saw him succeed and I saw opportunity open up for my family as a consequence of that. Now, whilst my parents left school before the age of 16, I was lucky enough to have a place at a grammar school and I went on to Oxford University, um, the first person in my family to go to uh, university at all. And I saw the opportunities that opened up for me and I took those opportunities and I ran with them as far and as fast as I possibly could and I never looked back, not once. And I want other people to have those opportunities. And that's fundamentally why I'm a Conservative. What did you do before politics and how has it shaped your views? So I've been uh, an entrepreneur. I've set up businesses from scratch. Um, I've sat around the kitchen table and come up with ideas and then brought teams of people together to, to deliver on those ideas successfully. I've done that in the UK. I took my business uh, to the United States uh, at one point. Um, and that taught me a huge amount. It taught me about how if you have a worthy endeavor, if you gather people together, if you can fire them up and enthuse them, treat them with respect, listen to them carefully, and then agree on a way forward and motivate people, you can move mountains, you can do great things. Um, and I think that's what my life in business taught me before I came into the House of Commons uh, in my later 40s, with that experience then to bring into government. What would you say is the highlight of your political career? I think anybody who goes into public life and into parliament should want to change lives. And I can precisely answer that question to a precise moment in time, which was when as Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, I visited a job centre and I sat down with a young man who'd struggled with mental health challenges and was still doing so, actually, to a lesser degree. But he had taken advantage of one of the schemes that we had put forward when I was Secretary of State, and he'd set up his own business, much as I had many years earlier. And he had spent uh, a year of his life struggling away with that and making a success of it. And I, I found that incredibly moving, that here was somebody who had been given an opportunity, and this is what conservatism is about. And sometimes it's about getting out of people's way, actually, removing the red tape and so on, but it's fundamentally about giving an opportunity. And here we were, we had done that for him, and he was making a success of it. Now that mattered for him, it mattered for his family, it mattered for his community, it mattered for the country that he and many thousands of people are doing exactly that. It makes us stronger. How has the Conservative Party shaped you as a person? I think my involvement uh, with the Conservative Party, what I have felt about it is it's brought out the best in a lot of us, and that is loyalty that you have a common cause, there are things you believe in, you're part of a family. I've met hundreds of members up and down the country. Some of them have been, uh, become very close friends of mine. And I think that is at the center of it, is loyalty. Now, during the general election campaign, we went through a tremendously difficult time when our party was on the ropes. My response to that was a loyal response. I went out and I did about 25% of all the media rounds to fight every inch of the way so that my colleagues in Parliament had the best possible chance of holding on to their seats. So to me, my party is about loyalty and playing with the team. Who is your biggest inspiration? So uh, I, I think probably Viscount Slim, who's an unusual choice because he's not incredibly well known, but he was a general in the Second World War. He fought the Japanese 
uh, in the jungles in Burma very successfully. But he inherited a rather bloated um, fighting force. And through his leadership, he slimmed them down and he went on to achieve many great victories. And the way that he did it, actually, which uh, he's written exten he wrote extensively about this, is by bringing out the best in every single individual, individual and raising their game and giving them the confidence that they could achieve even greater things than they were. And he wrote a very um, widely read book after the war, actually, from, called From Defeat uh, Into Victory. And there are a lot of lessons about the military side of what he did, but also it's essentially about leadership. And he's the kind of leader that I aspire to be. What do you hope members will learn about you during this campaign that they may not already know? That I'm going to win. That I'm going to take us on to win the next general election. What do you hope to show the public during this leadership campaign? So I, I, I want them to get to know me better. I think all of us should show a certain amount of humility. We've lost an election very heavily. I think we should demonstrate to the public that we are listening very carefully to what the electorate told us and what they're telling us throughout this campaign but that we are genuine people who care about our country and can make sure that our party is as relevant in Darlington as it is across the country in Devon. I think we've got to demonstrate that listening, we've got to demonstrate that leadership and the fact that we are on people's side. And I think if we can do that in this campaign and definitely not be fighting each other along the way, I think that's really important, um, then that's what I would like to see us do. Any other thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, people are coming to my campaign. You know, people are coming to me. Um, get involved um, and log on to melforleader.com and come and support me.